Hello, how are you doing? I'm Eric, and as you may know, I really enjoy following book prizes. And one of the reasons for that is not just to hear about some of the best new books of any given year, uh, but if it is a well-established book prize, there is a whole history of past winners and nominated books, which is kind of like a ready-made list of reading suggestions to go back to. And you may also know that I really love a list of books and going through that list and uh, one of the most well-established book awards in the UK is the Costa Book Awards and this year they're actually celebrating their 50th anniversary and so up on their website they've put a link uh, to all of their past winners and nominated books and I spent probably way too much time uh, going through uh, this past list of, of winners and nominated books and picking out some books that are my favorites from past years and it's really great to see them highlighted there uh, or like books that I've been wanting to get to that I've like heard about before and thinking like oh yeah I need to get back and read that uh, and there are some books which I've never even heard of before and which I want to find out more about so I'll put a link to this below in the description um, so you can have a look through it yourself because it's just always really enjoyable to like have a nose through and see what books are, are there and what books that you want to get to and I'd love to hear about in the comments below um, if you have any particular favorites uh, or ones that you've been wanting to read. Um, so let me know about those. Uh, but the Costa Book Awards, uh, they kindly sponsored me to do a video talking about some of my favorites um, from past years. So I'm gonna go through, I have a big pile of books here, and uh, go through year by year, um, starting from past year, to talk about some of my favorites. And I'd love to hear about what you think of them um, as well in, in the, the comments below. Um, so please let me know. Uh, but also also, really excitingly, today on November 23rd, the shortlists for each category are going to be announced and uh, so I'm really excited to hear about what books are up for the award this year and uh, it's going to be announced on Front Row on BBC uh, 4 Radio uh, but if um, once the the list goes up on the Costa Book Awards uh, website uh, I'll put a link to that in the description below um, so you can see what's nominated this year and uh, it'll be really fun to go through and, and uh, follow along with what books are going to win uh, this year because the, the winners um, for each category are going to be announced at the beginning of January and then an overall winner is going to be announced at the beginning of February. Um, so if you aren't aware of the Costa Book Awards, um, just a little bit of history to go into. Uh, I'll have a little sip of tea before I go into all of that. So the award was established in 1971 and at that time it was called the Whitbread Awards and uh, it was called that until the year 2006 when Costa Coffee took over as the main sponsor of the award and then it was called the Costa Book Awards and this is a really special book award because it doesn't just highlight you know best novel but a whole range of categories um, including uh, novel and first novel and biography and poetry and children's books and uh, so there are short lists for each of these categories every year and then a winner is announced for each of those categories and those authors get a monetary prize and then a overall winner each of those category winners are sort of pitted against each other and an overall winner is announced for the prize and which might seem like a strange thing at first because it is you know you have these are such different genres like how do you compare a children's book with uh, poetry and a novel but I think it's a really interesting exercise to do as well because it almost says that these books represent excellence in each of their genres and sort of categories but also they almost transcend the the category that they exist in and their genre um, to be a really great book that everyone should read and I I really enjoy how this award like encourages me to re read outside of my comfort zone because uh, as you may know I mainly only read new fiction and so it really encourages me to go back and read some poetry and biographies and um, so I have some of those included in uh, the 
these lists as well, and you know ones that um, the award encouraged me to to go and read. Um, so I'm going to go back year by year, and uh, starting with last year in 2020, and uh, this is a very special year because it's one that I was actually involved with, and I was a judge in the first novel category, and so I actually helped pick and select the shortlist. And so it's really exciting for me now to look back on this list and, and see that, oh yeah, these I, I had a hand in, in, in selecting these books and now it's part of the history of the prize. And um, so yeah, I feel like a little sense of like pride about that. And uh, also just, yeah, excitement that people are going to be reading and discovering these books in years to come. And in particular, our category winner, um, Love After Love by Ingrid Per sewed. Uh, this novel is so extraordinary and I loved it so much and you can see here I have my little uh, card from uh, last year's winners and then the category winners are uh, shown all here um, so that's really yeah. exciting and yeah this is such an extraordinary immersive story uh, about a mother and her son in Trinidad uh, and also their neighbor Mr. Chaitan and how they form a very special bond with each other and connection with each other and uh, but also how they have a falling out and uh, and so following their different storylines over the years and uh, this novel is so heartbreaking but also uplifting and really funny. Uh, it's it's told in this dial dialect which uh, is so mesmerizing and just draws you into the culture and the society of Trinidad uh, but also these characters lives and their particular perspectives and um, so it, it says you know, something really meaningful uh, about their lives in particular but also about the larger society. It uh, raises a number of issues to do with uh, familial relations and uh, domestic abuse and uh, homophobia and uh, self-harm and so there's a lot of serious broader issues covered in this but it is told in such a warm and engaging way that I fell in love with these characters and in our judges discussions you know we it was a really emotional discussion like one of the judges actually broke down crying like recalling some of the scenes and the characters and events that occur in this novel and so yeah it really touched us emotionally and and really moved us and uh, so yeah this novel is so wonderful I also really recommend listening to the audiobook that the author narrates herself uh, and does such a good job on it and yeah it really brings you into the story in a different way from reading the physical book um, but obviously reading the physical book is a rewarding experience in itself. I did both and because uh, I reread this novel um, during the judging process and yeah it's just oh, so good. I also wanted to mention that the winner of the novel category last year was The Mermaid of Black Conch by Monique Rafi and this was also the overall winner of the Costa Book Awards uh, for last year's prize and this is also such an excellent novel that I really loved it was one of my favorite books of the year so I was so excited and happy to see it highlighted it is such an imaginative and wondrous story uh, it's about a mermaid who washes on shore on a Caribbean island and uh, gets in a, it's a like romantic love affair uh, but also it's really interesting the the politics of this island and the the story of um, the societal relations and people on this island um, and following this story um, it's it's so gripping and uh, really unlike anything else I read last year. Uh, going back to 2019 there were a number of really great books uh, highlighted and the uh, category winner in the, the first novel category was The Confessions of Franny Layton uh, by Sarah Collins and this is such a mesmerizing historical novel about a woman in the early 1800s who is put on trial for uh, the murder of the uh, couple uh, that she was a servant in their, their households and uh, so it's following her story and how she came to this terrifying position and, and place in the world and uh, this gave me sort of the feeling of a kind of Sarah Waters novel in 
in that it's it's a really gripping uh, story, uh, but also it's really wonderfully told and uh, also shows a really different perspective on history in the time period uh, than any I've got before. Like I said, I really enjoy how the award encourages me to read outside of my comfort zone and you know try different kinds of books um, that I wouldn't normally read. And I don't read all that much poetry, uh, but I did read uh, the category award winner that year, uh, which is Flesh by Mary Jean Chan. And this was such an involving and moving collection of, of poetry. Uh, it explores uh, lots of issues to do uh, with uh, being a person from the Far East who moves to the, the West and being in a predominantly white and non-queer environment and uh, sort of the isolation of that, but also the struggles of familial relationships and uh, trying to really see and understand the points of view of different family members. Um, some of these poems actually inhabit uh, the uh, author's mother's point of view, and uh, but is also like a strange mixture of history and uh, and fable and folklore and um, so it mixes these different styles and influences uh, into these poems in a really unique and, and striking way and I was just completely drawn into this collection. Also the winner of the biography category in 2019 and the overall winner of the prize that year was The Volunteer by Jack Fairweather and this biography is so fascinating. It uh, So I know it sort of seems like World War II has been you know, much covered and, and I sometimes feel like, oh, do I need to read another book about World War II? Um, but there are so many aspects of it um, which are still unknown and are still being uncovered and told about. And this is one such story about a Polish officer uh, who goes undercover and infiltrates Auschwitz during the, the time that the, the concentration camps were occurring and uh, tried to inspire a rebellion from within the camp itself and was sending out messages um, letting the outside know what was happening in these camps and the dire circumstances of it. And uh, so you get this very personal story about his journey uh, going through this harrowing experience um, and it's so extraordinary the bravery of an individual that that would do that uh, but also the it's another perspective on the larger politics of the time and how some countries um, you know especially like America it took them quite a while to get involved in in the war so you get a really different perspective on the politics of that time and I just really appreciated uh, how this book gave me a different understanding of history that I hadn't encountered before. Now one of the great things about book prizes is it can be a kind of launch pad for authors uh, who they might be new authors or they might be authors who have published things in the past but haven't received much recognition or readership uh, but a, an award can really highlight them and bring them to the public's attention and uh, so the winner of the novel category in 2018 was Normal People by Sally Rooney and who uh, had published a novel before this um, which you know got a decent amount of attention uh, but this novel really brought her into a big public readership and has now become you know, such a, a famous and well-known author, well-read author. Um, with her third novel that came out this year, it was such a massive event. And uh, so because this novel won the, the Costa Book Award in the novel category of that year, I think it really helped bring her to the public attention and, and uh, give her a wider readership. And uh, and this novel is, I, I, I know there are a huge amount of opinions on, on Sally Rooney, but I, I found it a really involving and uh, fascinating novel looking at uh, uh, to the story of a couple it's it's sort of a romance but uh, but also a look at the the culture of that time of, of recent times in Ireland uh, but also just in wider modern society of a whole generation and uh, perspective that hasn't been given of, of different issues to do with um, classism and familial abuse and sexual abuse and how that applies to this particular story uh, but also the 
different dynamics of that like within the the larger society and i really appreciate this this very thoughtful point of view on uh, all of these issues while also telling a really involving story now, something else that book prizes does and or at least encourages us to do is take another look at books which we might uh, sort of overlook at first or might not think all that much about uh, but then uh, examining it closer um, see that there's so much more to this book than there is on the surface and one such book for me um, that the award did this for and uh, and also um, was the category winner in the, the novel category of 2017 was John McGregor's Reservoir 13 uh, which uh, also was long listed for the Booker Prize that year and is such a strange story in that uh, on the surface um, it seems quite simple in that it follows a girl that's gone missing in a local community and so it follows different members of that community over the the course of a year um, so you follow their different perspectives and the dramas going on in their lives but you also follow the natural environment over that time and how it's changing and evolving um, over the the course of that year all with the knowledge that this girl has gone missing and wondering what's happening to her and so there's a larger mystery of that and when i first read this i i sort of thought like well it's sort of fine i'm uh, i just sort of read it along and and i thought it was was fairly good but i didn't really understand what was so special about it until after I had finished reading it and was reflecting back on it and thinking more about the story and this is a book that I, that just since um, finishing reading it and thinking more about it uh, it has yielded so much more and I really appreciate uh, the the complexities of it and the the issues it raises and the themes that it, it's made me think about and so it's one of those really haunting books that has stuck with me over time looking back on 2016 actually the entire shortlist for the novel category i thought were all really excellent books i'd read them all and really appreciated them uh, i think they're uh, such an excellent quality of uh, category that year and uh, one of the novels uh, the essex serpent by sarah perry uh, i happened to be a judge on the british book awards that year and that's the novel we selected as the winner but actually for the costa book awards the novel they selected as the winner that year was days without end by sebastian berry which i also absolutely loved um, but had some issues not with the novel itself but the the marketing around it and I made a whole video having a rant about that uh, at the time uh, but the the novel itself I think is so excellent uh, so this is the story of two men uh, during the American Civil War uh, one of them is is Irish and uh, and following their their journey uh, over the the course of the war and uh, so not only fighting um, against the South but also um, being drawn into fighting against the Native American populations at the time, sort of pushing them back and this sort of American colonialist way of, and, uh, but also following their romantic relationship during this time and uh, to get a historical novel about a gay relationship during the war and two soldiers is so original and like nothing I'd read before and uh, so yeah this novel is so wonderful but uh, also beautifully written and also I was really excited at the time um, to meet Sebastian Barry um, at the Costa Book Awards that year and I got him to sign my book and had such a lovely conversation with him at the award ceremony so down to earth and relatable um, even though he'd just been you know lauded and he's such a respected uh, and well-established author um, yeah just had such a wonderful conversation with them so really respect um, this author and just love his work now in 2015 the winner in the the novel category that year was a god in ruins by Kate Atkinson and uh, so the award that year like encouraged me to to be to read my first Kate Atkinson book um, she's written many novels in the the past and I thought this novel is wonderful it's a historical a novel about um, the the war and the aftermath of the the war and it's so complex psychologically complex uh, but also really moving and and involving and shows again like a really different perspective on that time period and it also just 
set me on to to reading more Kate Atkinson and loving her work and so it's you know so exciting when you come across an author that you think this might be a new favorite author of mine and they've written all these other books which I can now go back on and explore and enjoy. But also it's interesting looking at what books uh, were listed for uh, the award that year but didn't actually win and one of those was Physical by Andrew Macmillan in the poetry category and this was my one of my favorite books of that year uh, but it didn't actually win the award so it makes me want to go back and, and read the, the actual winner of the prize and then judge for myself you know is do I think that book is better than this or um, you know because part of it is you know a lot of down to do with uh, you know own personal taste and stuff and yeah this is such a moving collection you know looking at the body and giving a different perspective on the body but uh, also relationships and queer life and uh, yeah I just loved this book so much. It's also interesting looking back and seeing books which won other book awards that year and I always think if a book is nominated for wins like multiple book awards then you know that really tells you something that there is like a wide group of very well-read people um, that hold that book in high esteem. Uh, so back in 2014 uh, the novel award winner that year was How to Be Both by ba Ali Smith uh, which also won the Women's Prize that year and this novel is so original and fascinating and um, like not just the the story itself but the way it was actually published so um, if you don't know uh, this novel when it was published there were two versions of it published where there's two very distinct sections of this book and in one version um, one section came first and then in the other version the other section came first so you can read it two different ways and um, there's a more historical novel like section of this book and then there's a more contemporary set section and so I read it first from uh, the uh, historical section and then um, moved into the more contemporary section and and it's really interesting to think how when we first encounter a book if if we read it in a particular way then it might give us an entirely different impression of, of the story and so and I've not actually gone back to read it the other way to you know read the second section first before the first section but I do really want to do that because I think that'll be such a fascinating exercise and you know it shows that books are things that you should go back and, and reread because you'll probably have a dramatically different experience of it the, the second time around and I just love Ali Smith's work here. It's so original and invigorating and really makes me fall in love with, with language but also the contemporary culture that she represents in such a fascinating way. Also the winner of the biography category in 2014 and the overall winner of the prize that year was H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald um, which went on to be a big bestseller as well and so many people were discussing and, and I read and just fell in love with uh, as well. It's a very personal story of a woman um, grieving uh, but uh, also a new connection she forms with a hawk that she's training and so you follow the author's story going through the, the course of a year and training this hawk and um, which is in some way a really difficult experience um, but also really helped her emotionally process what she was going through uh, at the time and I thought was so extraordinary um, but also looking at the the history of, of hawk training and the story of um, one man's um, history and story in particular and reflecting on that and uh, it's a sort of surprising overlap of experiences and uh, to give this new perspective on the world and it's, it's so wonderful and I've been reading meaning to read reading meaning to read more of Helen MacDonald's work. Uh, the winner of the novel category in 2012 and also the overall winner of the Costa Book Awards that year and also the winner of the Booker Prize that year was Hilary Mantel's Bring Up the Bodies and any book going against this novel in award categories must have been you know shaking in their boots that year because uh, how do you go up against this hugely acclaimed writer um, who's you know this is the second part in a trilogy and uh, to have a part of a trilogy uh, win 
overall awards in any given year, I think is an extraordinary thing in itself, but it is such an excellent novel and one that I absolutely fell in love with. Uh, the story of Thomas Cromwell when he became chief minister under Henry VIII and uh, you follow his story in this uh, new position, but also how in the first book he yeah, helped make uh, Anne Boleyn um, Henry's second queen. Uh, but in this story, you follow her downfall and how Henry wants to have her removed and how Thomas Cromwell has to assist in that and the political like logistics of, of trying to make that happen uh, is, is so riveting and, and brings this history into life in a whole new way and made me fall in love with Anne Boleyn as such a, a striking figure, a very canny individual um, who unfortunately uh, lost out. Now in 2011, a novel that was shortlisted for the novel category uh, but didn't win, uh, but did go on to win the, the Booker Prize uh, that year, was The Sense of an Ending by Julian Barnes. And uh, yes, I have the motion picture a version of, of this novel, um, which I know a lot of readers usually cringe at and don't like, you know, having the the movie version of, of a book. Um, but in this case, I really like having that because uh, I, I thought the film was really interesting as well and actually gave me a different perspective on the novel itself and thinking back on the story itself. And this is a novel that when I first read it, I didn't think all that much about, but when I went back and reread it and then after seeing the film version of it, I think it is such an excellent novel that says so much about our life and the process of aging and our perspective on history and our own memories and uh, yeah it's such an amazing novel and uh, yeah one that I continuously think back on and uh, uh, but yeah, I think it's so interesting going back and seeing what books were nominated for certain prizes but didn't win, but maybe they won other prizes. And, and so it's, yeah, that's a, another reason to go back and look at book, book lists and, um, yeah, and consider what went into the judging process that year. Now, a book that was nominated for the novel category in 2009, uh, but uh, was just shortlisted and didn't win was Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel. So, you know, she, <laughs> with the, the next book, she, she she got to win the prize, um, but in uh, that year she was only shortlisted for this, but of course this did win the, the Booker Prize. And yeah, and, and I know there's a lot of debate about which of uh, the, this Thomas Cromwell trilogy is people's favorite, and I think it's really difficult to choose. I mean, for me it would be between this and uh, Bring Up the Bodies. Uh, but they do give, uh, they do have a very different sense to them. I mean first reading this, I like fell in love with this historical time period in Thomas Cromwell's perspective as Hilary Mantel presents it. Uh, but then also the second book I think is more concentrated and, you know, a much tighter story. So it's really difficult for, for me to to choose. But yeah, this, this novel obviously is so excellent and the start of a really great trilogy. But really interesting to see too that it lost out that year uh, to Con Toibin's novel Brooklyn, uh, which was, I had a really interesting reading experience of um, sort of like John McGregor's novel. When I first read that novel, I didn't think all that much about it. I thought, or at least as you know, I was first reading it, I, I thought like, well, this is a good story, but is there anything so great about it? But when I got two thirds of the way through that novel, I suddenly, something was suddenly like triggered for me and I thought, wow, oh my gosh, this is an amazing story. And it is so involving about an Irish woman that travels to New York City and tries to make a life for herself there, but also still has connections to Ireland. And so the tension of that, and yeah, it's such a wonderful, involving novel that I just absolutely fell in love with, even though when I first started the book, you know, I didn't think, I was like, well, what's, what's so special about it? And so I'm so glad that the prize highlighted it this way and saying that, no, this really is an excellent book. Back in 2006, uh, David Mitchell's novel Black Swan Green uh, was on the novel shortlist uh, that year. It didn't win, uh, but I I think this is probably my favorite David Mitchell novel. So I was so glad that it was given prize attention in this way. It feels to me like a much more 
personal and moving story than David Mitchell's other books, which I also admire and um, really enjoyed. But uh, but there's something really special about this novel and the perspective of it. It's sort of a boy's coming of age story and and shows the story of this this English community um, in a really unique and, and touching and moving way. And uh, so, yeah, I'm really glad that this novel was given prize attention. It's also interesting to see what authors might win the book prize multiple years. And uh, one author that also won uh, for the novel category in 2005 was Ali Smith's novel The Accidental, um, which is such a fascinating story about a middle-class uh, English family that go on holiday and have an unexpected guest at their, their house, um, which kind of causes chaos amongst the household. And this is kind of a familiar trope in uh, Ali Smith's work of, of having someone outside of a, a group um, come suddenly come into that group and then really change the dynamic and the points of view and how those uh, individuals interact with each other. And uh, and she does this so well in this, this novel um, and in such an original way, you know, using her characteristic um, style of, of writing uh, to bring uh, language and the personalities of this family completely to life. A novel which was on the first novel category shortlist in 2004 uh, was Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell by Susanna Clark, and uh, which really established Susanna Clark as a major new voice in British fiction. Um, the way this historical novel um, about uh, two men in the early 1800s uh, gives gives such a new perspective on history by bringing magic and sort of supernatural elements uh, into the mix um, was so extraordinary. And, you know, Susanna Clarke uh, won the, the Women's Prize um, for fiction this year for Perenese. Um, and so, you know, even though she hasn't had a, a huge output, um, f uh, so partly to do um, with health problems um, that the author has had, um, but has really made her, you know, such a, a important voice um, in uh, fiction today. And, you know, this monumental, very long novel is such an immersive experience that, you know, right when it came out, I fell into it and completely fell in love with it. I can also get quite sentimental looking back on book lists like this because it reminds me of books that I'd read at the time and um, so really takes me back to the experience and what I was going through at that, that time and that stage in my life. And one of those books that has a really strong personal draw for me uh, was Bad Blood by Lorna Sage, which won the biography category of that year. And and uh, is has very special meaning for me um, since Lorna Sage was a teacher of mine and I was studying with her at the University of East Anglia at the time that um, she was nominated for the award and uh, and I know for her personally how much this this meant to her um, she sadly died um, since then um, actually like later um, that year uh, before I finished my degree um, she had died but uh, yeah this not memoir is so uh, special and and extraordinary um how it tells her own story um making her way in the world uh, as an independent uh, intellectual and figure and uh the difficulty she had in her relationship and um yeah in establishing her own voice um it's so movingly portrayed in this book and also the the inside covers of it um are really beautiful and uh yeah and so how much like language and books um themselves are such an important part of her life and and she introduced me to authors like Angela Carter and Joyce Carol Oates who I hadn't read before but um, then went on to become some of my favorite authors so um, yeah this is a very special book and a extraordinary read um, that I would really encourage you to get to if you've not read it before. Also the winner of the first novel category that year in 2000 was White Teeth by Zadie Smith, um, you know, who's obviously gone on to become uh, one of uh, the 
our most like well established and um and and most important uh British authors um today and and this novel I've been wanting to go back and reread um this because you know I read it at the time I I fell in love with it um but I haven't experienced it since then and so I'd really love to go back and revisit it now that I've read so much else of Zadie Smith's work that she's published since then uh, but also I think it's so wonderful how it, this novel really helped elevate her her career and bring her into the public's attention on um, you know this new voice in fiction and looking back on um, some of these lists of books it reminds me of how there are some books that I've not read before and that I really need to get to and so one such book um, was the uh, novel category winner in 1986 of Kazuo Ishiguro's An Artist of the Floating World and so I went out and got a copy of this and, and read it for the very first time um, just in the, the past week and um, so really enjoyed um, seeing this early work by Ishiguro um, who's work is so extraordinary. I mean, I, I absolutely love um, his writing now and, and his novels that I've read. And um, yeah, this is such an interesting book. And um, and this like 30th anniversary edition gives a new introduction by him um, reflecting on the experience of writing this, um, like the actual physical experience of writing that, the conditions at the time he was writing it under when it's, it was only his second novel. So he, you know, had got some good attention, but wasn't, um, you know, a very completely popular author and, and as well known as he is now, now that he's won the Nobel Prize for Literature and, and the Booker Prize. And um, and so, yeah, I think the winning the Costa Book Awards really helped establish his reputation. And it's such an interesting story of uh, men following bef during and um, after World War II in Japan and his experiences as an artist and his like political involvements at the time and um, and the memories that he ha some that he wants to repress and some that he's maybe slightly twisted for his own uh, you know his own purposes um, you know he's a slightly unreliable narrator and so it's such a fascinating perspective and on both like an individual but also um, a different look at the history um, that I'd not come across before. And finally the last book I want to discuss is Jeanette Winterson's novel Oranges Are Not the Only Fruit uh, which won the first novel category in 1985 and you know, helped establish another one of uh, the greatest British writers, um, I think, that are working today. You know, even though uh, I don't think all of her novels are are, are completely great, but um, is such an interesting experimenter and innovative Vader of you know form of fiction um, to you know give a really new point of view and it's so interesting how oranges are not the only fruit is such a different kind of book from her other books which you know could be classified as more experimental this is in some ways more of a like straightforward coming of age story but is such a, a powerful novel and story and still has such resonance and, and meaning today um, I think and uh, so yeah but but also you know she's a slightly controversial figure I mean earlier this year there was a, a big like scandal of how she uh, burnt and posted on Twitter about burning some of her own novels um, new editions of some of her her novels um, because she objected to how they were being presented by the publisher and being presented as slightly more cozy or fiction um, you know than what they actually are and and um, so yeah you know continues to be a much talked about uh, figure um, but uh, yeah is it's I think it's yeah interesting looking back and thinking how this this prize was sort of a you know springboard for her career and uh, and so it's it's so interesting seeing that and and that they recognized you know this obvious talent of um, this this author yeah who's gone on to be so well established and so well known so those are all of the books I'm going to look back on obviously yeah there's a lot more to look back on and consider um, so yeah I'd really encourage you to to look at the list of the books by clicking through on the link below and there's more books that I want to get to and read like Bruce Chatwin's novel uh, On the Black Hill, um, which was a past winner of the prize that I want to, to read, and uh, also Inside the Wave by Helen Dunmore, a poetry collection um, that won the poetry category in the year that it was nominated, but also won the, the overall book prize um, for that year. And so, yeah, there's a lot more to get back to and read and explore. And uh, yeah, so I 
just really enjoy that uh, about book prizes. And I'm so glad that, um, yeah, that they've had a special anniversary for the prize to give a chance to look back and reflect on some of the, uh, the winners from the past and in really exciting to see what books are nominated this year. So I'm going to really enjoy following the prize and see which books are declared the winner in January as, as well. So thank you for watching this video. Um, like I said, let me know if you have any favorites from the past or books that um, you've been wanting to get to that have won or been nominated for uh, the Costa Book Awards in the past. I'd, I'd really love to hear about them and uh, discuss them with you. Uh, but I hope you're reading good things and I will speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.